part four of the TR8 video section, is that right Steve? Four-ish. Ish, yeah. Um, three, subsection B, whatever you want to call it. So, the engine room. I uh, thought we'd give you a little bit of an intro here at the moment first. So we've got a cross bolt block here that's been pressure tested, no liners in, top hat liner then. That's going for 4.6 stage three Defender. This is the 3.9 engine, it's been built up for an MGR V8, which is actually leaving us today. Uh, Flory is now building a pallet for that, ready to be uh, sent out. This engine is a standard 3.9 that we're building up for a trike. So that'll be uh, fitted with uh, our full ignition system, Weber carburetor. This is going over to the States as a 4 litre GEMS turnkey engine. And this is the engine in question today, which is the 3.9 engine, which we're going to build up a stage one heads for the TR8. We'll come back to that in a second. Got quite a few engines on build at the moment. These two left us earlier this week. Uh, 3.9 and the 3.5 for a standard Defender 90 that guy's doing the original restoration on. Other things on build here, and I think Holly's got about seven engines on build at the moment. We've got a couple of engines going over to the States as turnkey engines for Defenders. Um, we've got 4.6 stage 3 and then back to a very early 1972 door classic Range Rover, an original looking 3.5 engine. So Holly's quite busy at the moment. He doesn't like being in front of the camera, so uh, he's done a runner right now. And uh, we thought we'd show you how everything's prepped before it goes on to an engine that we build up here as a, a turnkey engine, or a, in this case, the customer's brought his engine in, we've used the ancillaries from it. So, uh, yeah, um, first of all, the TR8 engine. Obviously, 3.9 block, uh, fully pressure tested, 270, Piper 270 camshaft been installed. Uh, Cloy's duplex timing chain set on there as well. And if we spin it over. You'll see with all of our 3.5 and 3.9 builds, because the blocks aren't cross bolted, they've got very small sidewall contact uh, on the mains caps. So we use the ARP stud kits. Uh, so ARP main stud kit and also ARP big end stud kit. It's the way we've been building our 3.5 and 3.9 engines for, for quite some time now. Never had a failure with it. Um, every, the reasons we do all of this is always explained in our literature through our eBay shop or, or when uh, customers phone us up who are doing a 3.5, 3.9 build, we, we talk over the merits of uh, building an engine that way. So on to the ancillaries. Uh, as you can see, lots of time spent in cleaning everything. Obviously a lot of parts from this engine were already clean, as you can imagine. Um, but the sump that's been stone chipped with hammerite paint, uh, other makes and models of paint are available of course, but that's our, ours and the customer's preference on this sump. Uh, we're going to be installing a brand new facet red top fuel pump. Obviously it's going MagnaCore plug leads and the RPI ignition amplifier onto one of our brand new distributors with the magnetic pickup in there. Uh, not that you can see it, but a little magnetic pickup in there, so that's what we'll be using on this vehicle. Um, the customer's original starter motor and alternator, there's nothing wrong with them, again they've just been inspected, make sure there's no fractures in any mounting points, uh, cleaned up, uh, engine mounts etc. Now onto the more interesting bits, obviously we've got the timing cover, so again it's been cleaned, uh, inspected, so visual inspection on the mating surface. Um, and also in the oil pump housing area, so where the gears are running, we're making sure there's no sharp shards sticking out in here. And uh, yeah, Holly's uh, inspected that and said he's happy with that. It's Holly's seal of approval. Brand new oil pump gears, reconditioned oil pump base, uh, so it's faced, um, everything's checked over. Again, the checks we do are probably the key thing, really, knowing what to look for in these. Um, and it will have a brand new pressure relief valve and bucket in there. Brand new push rods, why reuse old ones when there might be something wrong with them, just stick fresh ones in. OEM tappets of course. The rockers, we've now obviously got a full matching set, um, built up onto brand new shafts. So these rockers have been lightly honed on the inside to make sure there's no, again, swarf contamination in the soft alley that would scratch and score the, the new shafts. Uh, full matching set from 1997 now rather than the mismatch that this engine had originally. These have got the larger pad on as well because they're the latest spec, spec uh, rockers. Moving on to cylinder heads, this engine's having stage one heads. So um, I've actually got a standard cylinder head as well here and Steve's gonna try and focus and get enough light in to show you some of the differences. Um, so this is the stage one head. Uh, this is standard sat here behind it. So 
First thing is stage one heads, three angle valve seats. I don't know if Steve can show this. The colour difference on the actual seat itself will show the three different angles. So that has an effect of when the valve is actually on that first opening section and first closing section, just as it's coming on and off of the cam lobe. Um, you're getting maximum airflow over the, over the valve seat as, as things are just opening. Um, then after that, on the exhaust valve here, um, you can see this has been smoothed off here. Whereas on the cylinder head behind it, um, if I pick it up we can get a bit more light into it, you can see actually there's a hell of a lip there which is going to disrupt the exhaust flow. So that's one of the biggest sort of restrictions that we get rid of. Everything is lightly ported throughout uh, and port matched as well at each end, so on inlet and exhaust. So uh, bulleted guides, pipe of valve springs as well on all our stage one cylinder heads, um, which are an anti-bind spring as well, I've just got one coil uh, taken out. Uh, so yeah, that's the cylinder head area. Obviously brand new valves as well, we don't reuse the old valves, so always, always brand new valves, brand new guides. Then moving across to the right, we've got the fuel setup. So as previously mentioned, we've got the dual port Offenhauser intake manifold there. And now a lovely Weber 500 or Edelbrock 500 CFM carburetor, uh, which will be jetting correctly for the 3.9 stage one engine and then doing a road setup on. Important to do a road setup on the carburetor. Um, obviously, you have inertia which sloshes fuel around in fuel bowls. There's lots of things going on which um, it takes a while to, to get a really nice tune up on the road. But we, uh, we pretty much know what needles and jets we need in there straight away because we've done so many these days. So, um, with that all briefly shown to you, I think uh, we'll go and hunt Holly down, tell him the camera's been turned off, and let him build the engine. He's looking forward to it, I reckon. Okay, so we're back in the engine bay, and Holly's been rather busy, as you can see. So the cylinder heads are on, timing cover's on, the oil pump's been primed, and the base is on. So if this was an engine we were sending out to a customer, the customer doesn't have to worry about priming the oil pump, it's already all done. The engine's always built uh, on TDC, so pretty much guaranteed there's a little bit of a swing on the uh, distributor, it's going to fire straight up as well. Um, head bolts, these are 14 bolt heads obviously on a 3.9, uh, so two rows of five bolts have been torqued up, as you can see the bottom row of four though, Holly's still left them out, so uh, as we advise of all our customers that are running 14 bolt heads, uh, this is the way to, to bolt them up, the bottom row of four if we were to torque them up it would actually pull the head at a slight angle and that's why head gaskets and rover the engines all leak into the valley down here when 14 bolt heads are used. So later on during this build Holly will just blank these uh, holes off just with a, a set of bolts. Um, I think he does them up to about 20 foot pound just with a little bit of Loctite on purely just to uh, sort of finish the engine off and blank the holes off. But they have no real effect on actually talking the head down anymore. So um, looks like he's at the stage of doing tap at preload yet yeah, these rockers pedestals have got shims underneath them, looks like there's 16,000 shims under there. So what we're looking for when we do tap at preload um, is between the circlip and the piston inside the little tappet, uh, this is what we supply with our shim kit, a dibble stick, um, this is 60,000 this one. So this cam lobe is on the heel and we're looking to be able to just get that in between the circlip and the piston there so that's a nice tight fit, that's a 60 thou dibble stick in there, a little bit of free play, it's probably just a couple of thou over that. Um, so that's absolutely fine, we're looking for a good average across here. With all of our reconditioned cylinder heads, all the valves are ground in to within a few thou of each other, uh, so we can get that nice average across all the, uh, all the tappets and, and, and preloads across there. So I think next obviously he's got the other bank just to do preload on. Uh, and then covers an intake manifold to go on by the looks of it, so uh, looking good, should be ready to run soon. Okay, so uh, Holly's now got this engine to a stage where it's ready to go into the car. Um, so intake manifold gaskets on, intake manifold as well obviously, customer's original chrome rocker covers are there, distributors in, fitted, that's all timed up, ready to go. Obviously magna core plug leads, um, it's fitted the starter motor on, engine mounts, so I think this pretty much concludes this video, um, so the next thing we will post on Facebook for this car is the engine actually being fitted uh, and then the ancillaries being, uh, going onto it. We don't want to build this engine up anymore because it will just make it more difficult to fit into the car, so uh, we're quite happy with it being at this level and then installed. Right, well thanks for watching again and uh, keep your eyes peeled for the next video.